You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean Team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You've joined the Dean Team. With you is your brother in Islam, Mazen Abu Zuluf, and I have my very beautiful brother, Muhammad Hablas. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, mate? Alhamdulillah, Mazen, and how's yourself? Alhamdulillah, very, very good. Um, it's a pleasure, as usual, to get to spend some time with you and uh, do what we love doing most, which is talk about this great deen of Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And uh, we thought today's topic, we thought we might go back to, I guess, back to basics if you really want to call it that. Because, mm. you know, every uh, structure has a foundation. And this foundation, you know, one of the main structures that we have in this foundation of the deen is a topic called sincerity or ikhlas in Arabic. But by no means do I want anyone to think, okay, basic, this is something simple. And this oh, is yeah, something yeah. very, yeah. very easy. Absolutely. Um, this is really the core of our religion. And this is the core of an individual's ibadah. So the, you know, so one's personal worship between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the absolute core of it. And inshallah, um, we will touch on different ways of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where this is an absolute key point to have. You know what I found most amazing as well that you know in the in the uh, series of books that we usually refer to that most Muslims have in their household, which is Riyadh al-Salihin, by Imam Nawawi, may Allah grant him Jannah, inshallah. Um, the first chapter, completely, the, you know, the very first chapter in that series of books is actually dedicated entirely to the topic, to the uh, to this theme of uh, sincerity, subhanAllah. Well, you know, going going on to the book of, you know, Riyadh Salihin, this is a whole collection. And, you know, it's not just about the fact that the great Imam al Nawi has collected all of these beautiful, authentic hadith and he's put them into chapters, no. But even... The order of which he's put the chapters was a lot of thought into it. This is this is from a scholar's point of view. Okay, how do we start? You know, one of us wants to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, how do I start? So when you open up Riyadh Salihin, Mezin, you're right. The first chapter that, that you do come to is the chapter of sincerity. Why? Because really, if we don't establish sincerity in the very beginning, in fact, the very first thing, then everything else after it really sort of collapses. That's true. You know, why are we here? We're here for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we, you know, why does one pray? Why does one fast? Why does one give charity? Why does one, you know, why is one good to his mother? Yeah. Why? Oh, because she raised me. No, this isn't why. You know, we're good to our mothers because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to be good to our mothers, whether they're Muslims, non-Muslims, whether they're kind, whether they're harsh, whether they you know what I mean? So this, and in being good to your mother, regardless of how she is, Shows that there's sincerity in that action because you know it's very good to be nice to someone who treats me nice and kind and hugs me at night. But you know, but what if my mother isn't that person? What if my mother is someone who's a bit violent? What is you know? Just hard to get along with, right? In general. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, if my mom is hard to get along with, does that mean that I walk away from it? No. Sincerity means that I do it and I do it purely and simply for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So well, you, know, you know, one this of the is things what, Hablos, is that what I've noticed as well is. Um, when we talk about sincerity, it actually goes hand in hand with um, the topic of, you know, every action that we do in Islam, one of the major prerequisites, the very first prerequisite itself is actually intention, to have the right intention. And, you know, the intention goes hand in hand with sincerity because you can have any a number of intentions or different types of intentions. You can have an intention to, you know, do something to show off in front of people or to please someone or to make yourself look good or to, you know, fit in. You know, that, that is an intention. But then we come to the question of, okay, is it a sincere intention? No. Or is it an intention for something else? Well, look, um, you know, going to our most important source, which is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Mezin, you spoke about basics. Well, this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also. He says, وَمَا أُمِرُ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءُ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُ الزَّكَاةُ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they were not commanded, meaning the people were not commanded except that they should worship Allah and Allah alone, that they should perform the salat and give the zakat and verily 
This is the right religion. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from the people. And in another verse, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that it is neither their meat nor the blood that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is the piety from you that reaches him. Again, it's going to what sincerity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, when you make your sacrifices, when you slaughter a sheep or you slaughter a goat or you slaughter an animal for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is saying, don't think it's the meat or the blood of this animal that reaches me. Rather, it's what's in your heart that reaches me. The reason why you slaughter the meat is what reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it's not the blood, you know, it's, and, and, you know, subhanAllah, and it's not the meat. And the final one here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Say, whether you hide what is in your hearts or you reveal it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. You know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you don't have to say it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows what's in our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows His his infinite knowledge, his ultimate knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what's in our hearts. When you do something, yeah, you know, sure, I may be able to lie to Mezen and come in and, you know, you know, put this whole facade on and this whole picture and this whole image and try to show you Mezen that, look, I'm something. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what's in my heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, subhanAllah, going back to what you were saying, Mezen, about intention. It's a bit hard to separate intention and sincerity. Yep. Right, Allah, yani Allah subhanahu wa taala knows what's in the heart. Subhanallah, it's um, well, it's an amazing topic. Um, uh, there's also some hadith hablas that um, that show the uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made very clear to us the importance of of um, you know having sincerity in our actions, in our worship, in anything that we do. Um, and uh, the most famous of the hadith, which is again the first hadith mentioned in the Riyadh al-Salihin. Is the famous hadith of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, where he reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he says that deeds are considered by the intentions, uh, and a person will get the reward according to his intentions. In the in the bin niyat. So every the deed is in accordance, and the reward of that deed is in accordance with intention with your intention. So and he continues to say, and it's a little bit long. He says, "Whoever so whoever immigrated for Allah and His Messenger, his immigration is will be for Allah and His Messenger. And whoever immigrated for worldly benefits or for a woman to marry to marry, his immigration would be for what he immigrated for." Subhanallah. So you find that he made very clear that you get you pretty much you reap what you sow. You your intention is to do something for the sake of Allah, then you will be rewarded by Allah. Your intention is to do something for the sake of worldly things or other intentions, then you will be rewarded accordingly. Subhanallah. This is um, this is actually a really really amazing hadith, and there's a lot of depth to it, because I believe it was Imam Shafi who says that this hadith alone stands as one third of our Sharia. Subhanallah. Right? Imam Shafi is saying this one hadith narrated by Umar ibn al-Khattab, it stands and it's a muttafaqun alayhi hadith. Right? He says it stands as one third of our Sharia. Why? Because this is the core of everything. What was the intent behind it? And even now, Mezin, you find that even now the Western system has also adopted this. You know, now when, when there's a murder case, right? The intent behind the murder yeah. plays a huge role. Absolutely. You know, that what was the intention behind the action when you struck this person or when you harmed this person or, you know, as severe well, yeah. as, you know, when you killed this person, what was the intent did you do it simply because there was a personal thing? Was that a self-defense? Right? So the intention plays a big role. And here, the Prophet of Allah is telling us that everything that you do, and this is important too because it sort of gives us structure, eh, Mezin? Absolutely. That, okay, look, do I just go crazy and do a whole lot of acts of ibadah thinking, you know what, that this is what makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy? Yeah. No, the Prophet of Allah is saying that everything that you do, you need to have a motive. I need to have an intention. That what is this for? What is this for? Why? Because when I have an intention that I'm doing something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what happens? I can be sincere about it. I can continuously remind myself that, hey, I'm doing this and I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There, there is something else that I wanted to point out in this particular hadith. This is probably one of the most famous hadith, right? But here you find that the Prophet of Allah, he's speaking about the migration in specific, that whoever migrated from Mecca to Medina to please Allah and his Prophet, then this is what he will be rewarded for. But then isn't it interesting how he mentions someone who wants to marry? Yeah. Okay. The reason why this was mentioned was because this was true. There was a companion who actually did leave Mecca and went to Medina in order to marry a woman. 
and I believe her name was Mezi? Um Qais. Um Qais. So this companion, right, who was a Muslim, who lived in Mecca, and who did the exact same action as all the other Muslims did. He left his home, he left, he left his home, behind. he left Mecca, he, he, he did exactly what all the other men were doing and all the other women were doing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what was in the heart of this companion. This, this companion, he went with the intention of marrying a woman that was in Medina. So the Prophet of Allah, this thing was so important for his ummah that he mentioned it in a hadith. So this companion now will be mentioned until the day of judgment. This companion, he did something, right? But the Prophet of Allah mentioned the action and look how subhanAllah, he didn't mention the man. We know the woman that was, so we know the name of the woman, but the man himself was not mentioned to protect the identity of him. But the Prophet of Allah mentioned that whoever migrated to marry a woman, and now this is going to be recorded for eternity, right? So long as so long as the books will be opened up, we will forever read about this man to remind us, my brothers and sisters, that when you do something, you make sure that you do it for Allah and His Messenger. I do it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, you mentioned before, Hoblos, about, you know, we, we can probably put on a, a show in front of someone and put on the, you know, the facade of, you know, I'm um, sincere or, you know, whatever. And um, Allah Azza wa Jal, He knows. He mentioned the verses from the Quran and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself also says a beautiful hadith. He says, Inna Allah la, inna Allah ta'ala la yanzuru ila ajsamikum wa la ila suwarikum wa lakin yanzuru ila kulubikum wa, wa a'malikum. So he basically says, Allah Azza wa Jal, he does not look at your figures, he does not look at your attire, you know, your, your, your physical attributes, your, you know, the outside, but he looks at your hearts and your, and your deeds. So we can, we can fake, we can do stuff behind someone's back, that's easy. Even fasting itself is easy to, you know, we can tell someone we're fasting and they're not going to be any wiser. Um, but Allah Azza wa Jal, he knows everything, what's in us, what's secret, what's hidden, what's public. Even thoughts that we have not even spoken yet, he will know what we're thinking. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. You know, here, here you find that Jabir, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, he narrated that, uh, you know, he narrated that, that we accompanied the Prophet of Allah in an expedition when he said that there are some men in al Madina. So Jabir here is saying that I went with the Prophet, we went with him on one of the battles. We left our homes and we left our children and we went on to this long, long trip. And so on the way back, the Prophet, he says that there are some men who are still in al Madina, meaning that they're still at home with their wives and their kids and their families. There are some men who are still in Medina who are with you wherever you march and whichever valley you cross. They have not joined you in person because of their illness, right? But they share the reward with you. You know... <laughs> Subhanallah, whenever I read this, I sort of imagine that imagine being a companion, right? He's <laughs> left his wife and kids and family and, you know, the area, the boys, wh whatever, right? I've left all this stuff, you know, and I've gone on to this battle, you know, I've left, you Never know, this, to return, maybe. this very long expedition and I'm thinking, you know what, I'm reaching levels here, look at me. Right, I'm something else and I'm with the Prophet. And You're there's, feeling bad for the guys left behind. Actually. Right, yeah, right. And there's the danger. And then... All of this, right? So here I am thinking I'm flying. The Prophet of Allah turns around to tell me that these men who stayed home, they stayed home, not, not stayed, you know, watching. They stayed at home and they share exactly the same reward. In fact, he says, they're with you every valley you cross, every mountain you climb. Come on, man. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? But why? Why? He says, because they intended sincerely to be with you here and the only thing that held them back was a valid excuse, right? Was a sickness or something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? He made it permissible for them to stay back. So don't belittle the intention. Don't belittle the intention. These men are getting full rewards while they enjoy the safety and the luxury and the comfort of their own homes and their families. Subhanallah Hablas uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, very great scholar. He once said that uh, deeds without sincerity, so performing a deed without being sincere about them, is like a traveler who carries uh, a water jug, but in this water jug, he's actually got dirt in it. And he's thinking like, why would you do that? Like, why would you go through all that trouble, you know? And that's, that's exactly right. It's going through all that trouble to carry that water jug, but it doesn't actually benefit you at all. 
You know, you're going, and, and this is exactly like um, the deeds that you perform without any sincerity. You're going through the trouble of performing these deeds. You are, you know, putting in the effort. You're, you know, you have restless nights. You, um, you know, you've got, or you're expending all that energy. But if you're not sincere, it's all for nothing. It burdens you and it brings no benefit whatsoever. Yeah. So this is the action that is done without sincerity. is like the person that carries around the water jug, but he's got dirt in it. No yeah. point whatsoever. Yeah, it's, it is. Um, you know, sometimes you do set out to do something and you start off all pumped, right? And you're pure and you're sincere. And I think, Mezin, I think maybe this is sort of important that we sort of touch on it, right? Because I don't want to completely demotivate some of the people who say, oh, well, you know what, I've been doing this great action, right? But now I've noticed that my sincerity is a bit, um, you know, maybe my sincerity is a little bit polluted, if you like. You know, so many times we do start something off, and when you started it off, it was sincere. And you really were, you know, 100%, you know, that this is all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes things do happen, and this is normal. Brothers and sisters, this is normal. You know, you may start something that was supposed to be just me, between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then you found that it grew and it grew. And then, you know, naturally my name got out there and then things, okay, fine. What do you do then? Don't let the trick of shaitan come to you and say, well, look, you know what? You're no longer sincere anymore. Stop it. No, this is not right. This is not correct. I've heard, I've heard many, many, many great mashayikh say that, and please, brothers and sisters, I, I, I strongly recommend that you take note of this. That if you are doing a great action, but you have corrupted sincerity or corrupted intentions, do not stop the good action. Continue with the good action and work on your sincerity. Work on your intention. Do not stop the good action. And this is, you know, this is something that I myself sometimes struggle with. And I know sometimes, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes I sit down with Mezen and we have these personal chats with each other that, you know, sometimes I get out there and I love doing da'wah and all the other stuff, but sometimes my intention does get corrupted. Sometimes my sincerity is corrupted. And, you know, so, so many times I've come to, you know, say, well, okay, this is it, man. I'm just going to stop. And But this is shaitan because, because you know that we, we're going to cause more harm by stopping this good action than by the fact that it has corrupted intentions in it. So no, continue on what you're doing, but work on your intention. Work on your sincerity. This is how we, and this is how you, this is how you defeat shaitan, right? So please keep up the good work, but work on your sincerity. And know that, you know, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's a jealous God. What do I mean by He's jealous? That He loves when something is done, something is done for Him and Him alone. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it. And this is why you find that, uh, subhanAllah, many of the sunnah that the Prophet used to do that build sincerity have now been lost. One of them is meditating, right? This is how Jibril came to him. The Prophet of Allah, he used to go to a secluded place. He used to sit there and think and contemplate and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, some soul searching. This, you know, these actions that, that you do on your own, build a great relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, because our deen has a lot of worships that are done collectively in congregation, it sort of does take away from the sincerity thing. Amen. Yeah, you you know, need some so, alone time to yeah. sort of start thinking a bit clearly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, so yes, you find that, you know, look, so many things are done together. Salah, the Jum'ah, you know, um, you know, Eid, and all of these things are all done together. So, you know, some, sometimes it's a bit hard. But there is a lot of beautiful things that, that you can do that do build on sincerity. You know, one of them is being the optional fasting. Optional fasting, why? Because no one can see me fast. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, right? Um, another beautiful one is the night prayer, right? The, the night prayer, you know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, there's no one around. The boys from my center are not there. The sisters from the masjid are not there. You know, it's just me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a great way. Um, giving charity both publicly and in secret. In fact, uh, Hoblos, this is one of the seven that is uh, shaded on the day of judgment when there's no shade except the shade of Allah is a person that gives charity so secretly that, you know, that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand did, uh, which is a figure of speech meaning so secretly that, you know, no one but that person that gave and Allah Azza wa Jal will know about it. Yes. And, this, and this person will be shaded on the day of judgment, subhanAllah.
يعني, again showing you how great this action is but as well don't let that stop you from also giving publicly because sometimes when you do give publicly as well with sincerity and with the right intention you can be the key to motivate others but um, the, the, the subhanallah going back to the hadith there is one that, that I wanted to mention only because it's a bit, bit raw it's a bit blunt but here he said that the prophet of Allah was saying to his companions he says that when two Muslims are engaged in a combat against each other with their swords and one kills right and one of them is killed the prophet of Allah he says that both of them are doomed to hellfire so the companions were amazed you know they, they were they were they were amazed and so then one of them asked he says a messenger of Allah as for the one who kills it is understandable right it is understandable that the murderer is thrown into hellfire but then the companion says but the prophet of Allah why is the one that's slain why is the one that's killed why is the murdered one? Why is he thrown into hellfire? The Prophet of Allah, he replied, he says, because he was eager to kill his opponent. Yes, he was killed, but in his heart, he was just as eager as the one that murdered him. He was just as eager to kill the other guy. So yes, while, you know, again, it's not about the action. If we're going to look at action, Mezin, one of them's a murderer and exactly. the other one's a victim. The other one's a victim, exactly. Right? But the intention behind it, yes, this man was killed, but in his heart, he wanted to kill him just as much. So again, you know, verily actions are with, are with the intention that is behind it. You know, I, I came across a beautiful saying by um, one of the pre pious predecessors, and uh, he said a very beautiful saying, which was, the sincere one is he who hides his good deeds in the same way that he would hide his bad deeds. You know, meaning that, he the good deeds that he performs are actually so sincere that he w even his good deeds he wouldn't want anyone to know about them. Subhanallah, oh, it's a very God. beautiful saying. You know, there's a hadith um, Hublos about um, which I find it very very interesting. And you know, we've done khutabs on this particular story. And there's a hadith about um, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu in the race that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, uh, you know, he gives. Uh, it shows you what happens. The three people that will be judged first on the day of judgment, right? And this is this hadith just blows my mind. Subhanallah. The first of the men whose case will be decided on the day of judgment is a man who died as a martyr. So a like shaheed. a shaheed. Already that that first sentence just freaks you out. So the first person that will be judged on that day will be a, a shaheed, a martyr, a person that died for the sake of Allah, and then he will be brought forward to judgment, and Allah will make him recount his blessings. And he will recount them. So Allah will ask him, you know, what, all the things that I've done for you, you know, all the blessings that I've given you. Allah Azza wa Jal obviously knows, but he's making this person recount the blessings that Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed on him. So he does, he recounts them. Then Allah Azza wa Jal himself will say, and what did you do to deserve these blessings? So he recounted the blessings that Allah gave him. And then he says, I have fought for your sake until I died as a martyr. So this man has given up everything. He's given up his wealth. His life, his family, he's left his family, he's left his kids, he's left his house and his property. He's left everything behind and he's gone out on the battlefield, which is one of the, you know, scariest way to go and, you know, to go and lose your life and, you know, dying under the shimmering swords. And then he says, I died for your sake, ya Allah. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, listen to this and this is the, this is the clincher. Allah will say, after this man will say, ya Allah, I went and died in battle for your sake. Allah Azza wa will say that you are a liar. You fought so that you'll be called brave and a warrior and courageous. And you were called that. You got what you want. You're in, whatever you intended for, you got what you want. And then the orders will be passed against him and he will be dragged on his face into the whole fire. And look how the story started. The man died as a, as a martyr, as a shaheed. Which is the, the greatest This reign. is the pinnacle. This is the ultimate way to leave this dunya. You know, and this is a, this is a, this in itself is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet this man, the end of his story was that he was dragged, not just dragged to the hellfire, dragged on his face, in a humiliating way, to the hellfire. Subhanallah, and this again goes back to the whole point of intention. His intention was not to please Allah. His intention was not to earn the pleasure of Allah. His his intention was to be called courageous. And Allah says, you got what you want. People, you know, you, whatever you intended for, you got. You haven't been oppressed. 
this is how fair Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is fair and, and, you if know, this is what you wanted this is what you got and Mezin this is this is also the same thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does with the non-Muslims yeah because they will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say but look we did all of these yeah. great actions yeah. in your name yeah. he says to them no you didn't you did these great actions in the name of the cross follow the cross and the cross will be thrown into the hellfire you did it for the cross then follow the cross you did it because you worshipped the sun and you thought that this was he says follow the sun the sun will also be thrown into the hellfire you know, so so this is also the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second, there's, a, there's two more. The second of the men will be, it was a man who acquired knowledge and he taught it to others. Um, and he recited the Quran. So this man is a alim. He learned knowledge, he acquired knowledge, he taught it to others. He learned the Quran, he recited the Quran, he taught it to others. You know, like, the, this is again one of the highest ranks of a, of a Muslim that you could ever be, is do these things. And then again, he will, he will be brought to Allah and he will be made to recount his blessings. And he will recount all the blessings that Allah Azza wa Jalla gave him. Then Allah again will ask, what have you done to deserve these blessings? And he will say, Ya, ya Allah, I acquired knowledge and I taught it and I recited the Quran. And, that he and, did it for and I did it for seeking your pleasure and your pleasure only, Ya Allah. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla again will turn to him, will tell him that you're a liar. You acquired knowledge that so you will be called an alim, a scholar. And, the, and you recited the Qur'an so that it might be said that he is a qari. He, is, he has a beautiful recitation and a beautiful voice. And you got what you wanted. They said this. They said you were a, a scholar. And they said, they praised you as a scholar. They praised your knowledge. They sought to sit at your feet and obtain the knowledge that you had. And they listened and cried behind you when you were praying. You know, I'm adding to this obviously. The whole point is, you, you got what you wanted. Then he will give the orders that this person will be dragged on his face and thrown into the hellfire. Subhanallah. Imagine all that time, Hoblos, you're neglecting your family because you're going to study circles. You're leaving the country possibly to go and study overseas. You're, um, you know, the, the life of a scholar is not, you know, they're not exactly rich and well off. You know, they actually don't have an income. You know, they subsist on, you know, people giving them donations or people helping them, helping them out. It's not a, you know, he, this Muslim sacrificed it's a, a lot. It's a tough life. It's, it's he not sacrificed a, a lot. And you know, anyone on an outwardly appearance would say, man, this guy deserves Jannah and more. But Allah Azza wa Jal decided that this person is dragged again in humiliation on his face into the hellfire. Why? Because his intention was not sincere. And, and Mezin, this really goes back to why does Imam and Nawawi start off this great book with sincerity? Absolutely. Because going overseas and sacrificing your family and going to these study circles and doing all of this is going to be not not a waste of time it's actually going to be against you exactly if you do not have sincerity that's the scary part it's one thing you know i don't want this to come across the wrong way it actually would be better for these people to have stayed at home and done nothing yeah right and this is obviously not to encourage anyone to do this but this is for someone to think well, for I mean, us to to remind ourselves firstly and others to check our intention before we do something well i mean again again going to look if you feel like whoa hang on i think i'm falling into this category I think I may be one of these three people, right? Just like what we said earlier, don't stop what you're doing. Don't go, oh, well, well okay, you know what? If that's the case, then I'm going to pack up my mm. Quran yeah. and I don't want to learn it, right? Or, no, 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 no. Keep learning. Keep at it. But what are we going to start doing? Fixing we're going to work intentions. on our sincerity and we're going to work on to our intentions. And the third and final one of the people that will be judged on the Day of Judgment will be a man that we brought, brought in front of Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah made this man abundantly rich. He had money. You know those people had money just flowing. He just uh, everywhere he gives and he just somehow gets more money. So it's a bit like yourself, Mizin. Uh Inshallah one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this guy was abundantly rich and he was granted any kind of wealth, you know. And then he will be brought in front of Allah again. He will be brought in front of Allah and Allah will ask him to recount his blessings. And he will recount them. And then Allah will ask him, what have you done to deserve these blessings? So the man will say, Ya Allah, I spent money in every cause in which you wished that it should be spent. You know, for instance, any fundraiser, I was there. Any pledges, I was there. Any mosque building, I was there. Centers, orphans, I gave my money like there's no tomorrow. And people knew me. You know, I tried to be secret, I became famous because of this, you know. And Allah Azza wa Jal will say, you're a liar. You did this so that it might be said about you that you are generous. You're a kareem. You know, if you want money, go to this guy, mashallah, he's very generous and he gives and he's a good brother, you know. And it was said, people did call you generous, people did call you kareem. And then the orders will be passed 
and this man will be dragged onto his face and thrown into the hell fire. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran that you will never attain true piety until you give that from which you know you give up that which you love. And you know, uh, most most times people will take that as being money because you know we have this connection to money. This person gave everything up. He gave again. He could potentially have neglected his family in order to give up all this wealth to show you know that he's giving this wealth that is generous, that is kareem. Yet look at his recompense from Allah was that he's dragged in humiliation into the hellfire. What an end. These three acts are acts that we should all aspire, you know, the acts themselves, the outward the acts, are acts that we should all aspire to, you know. And this is what Muslims are all encouraged to do. We're encouraged to seek knowledge and teach knowledge. We're encouraged to stand up for our religion. We're encouraged to, um, to be generous and give. But these people will all, thrown, will all be thrown into the hellfire. Why? Because their intention was corrupted, subhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. Speaking of the Shaheed, one of the stories that sort of did come to mind you know, and I really would like to mention this story is to show you that you can actually reach a point where you control your sincerity, you control the intention. And one of the greatest examples was Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was in the midst of a battle. You know, this isn't someone who was at home in his comfort, you know, uh, maybe doing some work at his center or doing some work at his masjid. This was a man who was in the battle. And we all know, and I'm sure that we've all watched some war movie somewhere, that you know, people become different when they're out there, right? You don't think the same anymore. You don't act the same. But here is the story of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who who came face to face to one of his opponents, to one of the disbelievers, right? And started to you know, it became a one on one, and then you know, so here he is, he's fighting. The man falls. The man falls. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu raises his sword. So the non-Muslim now realizes that, look, these are my last moments. Ali is going to whack me a good one. And then what does this non-believer do at that point? He spits in the face of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Imagine, like, you know, he's thinking, look, I'm going. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of taking me out just like that. I'm going to do my best to disgrace you. So he spits in his face. And what I really, I mean, this is a, a very degrading act, especially for the Arabs. So he spits in his face. So what do you expect to come out of Ali really now? I mean, uh, you know, if you, if you were to ask some, some, some of the young boys, <laughs> well, if I was going to whack him one good one, now I'm going to do 10, right? Just take in spite of the fact he spat in my face. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu amazingly, amazingly stops in his tracks, wipes the spit off his face, turns around and walks off and leaves the man unharmed. The man is absolutely boggled. Couldn't believe his eyes. What just happened? I mean, I spat in his face, right? And he was about to whack me. And what does he do in return? He turns around and walks off. So the man just dying to know, and the companions wanted to know. So when Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was asked later on, Anu Ali, what happened? He says, when I raised my sword to begin with, I raised it for Allah. But when the man spat in my face, something entered my heart and I wanted to kill him for my own personal reasons. He says, so when this entered my heart, I stopped, I walked away. Because had I killed him, Allah. it wasn't going to be for Allah. It was going to be for my personal revenge. SubhanAllah. This is incredible. What control, man. Honestly, this is incredible. But my brothers and sisters, we can reach this. We can reach this. One of the things that we can do is to, when I come to do an action, I remind myself, okay, why am I doing it? And then if you can, Before during... You do the action, you Yes, mean, yeah? right? Yeah. So... So just before I do an action, I'm going to remind myself, all right, this is for Allah. And then during the action, right? And then during the action, right, while I'm still doing this action or, or then even then I remind myself. And then after when I finish the action, I make a istighfar. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me, right? And I remind myself that what I did was all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept us all. Inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. Allah any Azza final words? I just make dua, inshallah, that Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the capacity and the clarity to ensure that any action that we do is done with sincerity and ask Allah Azza wa Jal 
to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from the Amen. Mukhlisin, Amen. from those that do everything with ikhlas, subhanAllah. Amen. And uh, unfortunately, this is the end of this particular talk, and uh, it's been a pleasure having you, Hablas, and uh, being able to speak about this. It's a very, very important topic, and inshallah, the audience gets the benefit out of it, inshallah. Inshallah ta'ala. Uh, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfirka, wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel Dean Team Sydney.